This is part 11 in the Craftsman 150 Drill Press Rebuild Series. If you haven't seen part 10, click the link at the top of the screen. In this video, we're going to be masking and painting the nose on the head frame, and then we will be fabricating the stator band and the terminal board for the motor. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff, and welcome to my shop. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. It has been almost a week since we painted the main parts of the drill press. And we wanted to make sure that that paint fully cured before we started masking to paint the nose. So all I'm going to do here is mask out the areas that are going to get painted. So the center nose piece and the headband area are what's going to be painted and everything else on the head is going to get masked off. And we're just going to kind of fast forward through all this masking. You get the general idea. And we're just making sure, you know, taking special care not to damage the paint that we've already applied. So the paint that I'm using here is going to be a black metallic Rust-Oleum paint that uh, should go nicely with the uh, champagne bronze metallic that's already on there. And we're just going to make sure we get good overall coverage of the areas that we're painting. And we don't want to put it on too thick, but as I said before, I don't do several light coats. I just do one medium coat. So several light coats would be fine. But that's how I do it. Just one medium coat. And this isn't necessary. They did not come from the factory with a different color nose or anything like that. They were all one color but i like painting the nose and making it stand out i think it adds to the aesthetic of the drill press so we're going to let that head sit for about 45 minutes to an hour in the meantime all this other stuff is already cured so we can go ahead and remove the masking from it and this is the base for the drill press and we're removing them. You can see where the paint came through in those cutouts on the table. And as I feared, I did not mask over them directly with tape. So we had a little bit of bleed over with some paint and primer. So I'm using 400 grit here to sand it. And we're going to go ahead and remove all of the masking that's on all of these parts. So I'm cleaning out the column bore on the base right now. And we've got the bore on the underside of the base as well. Once we know we've got all the masking out of there, we can set the base aside. And we'll do the same thing to the table. And we had the same problem with the table where it bled through a little bit. So if I had remembered to just put a piece of tape over those cutouts before we mask off the table, that would have prevented all this. But 
no big deal. So the 400 grit is a lighter grit than what our finished grit on the tables were when we used the hand rotary sander or oscillating sander. We sanded them to 320. So I'm going to come back later with the uh, oscillating sander and just go over them one more time with the 320. So we remove the masking out of the lock bores as well as the column bore and the chuck key boss. Now we're on the underside of the table. And here we are with the head. It's been about 45 minutes. So this paint is still a little tacky. We don't want to touch any of the painted areas, but we want to go ahead and remove the masking now because if we don't, the masking uh, might adhere with the edge of the paint and take paint with it when we go to pull it off. So we don't want to let that paint fully cure before we remove the mask and we want to go ahead and get it off now. And then we're going to use extreme care in removing the rest of this masking to make sure we don't pull any of the uh, bronze paint off. Because touching it up is, would be a real pain. And while we're doing this, we're going to go ahead and start removing the masking out of the various bores that are in the head. All along, we're being very careful not to touch any of the black painted areas. And that's the head. So now we've got the two end bells or end frames for the motor, and we're just going to push those rubber plugs straight through. And then we're going to remove that masking that's on the boss. And we'll do that with both end bells. And that's pretty much all the masking. So now we're going to come back with that oscillating sander. And this is 320 grit. And we're just going to be careful not to touch any of the painted stuff. And we're just going to go back over the table on the base and on the table itself and the boss areas for the column and the chuck key. We're just doing a single pass. And this would smooth out any of those hand sanding areas we did on the tables with the 400 grit. And there we go. So now we're going to fabricate the stator band for this motor. So the original stator band on this motor was originally painted blue. And I believe the whole motor was painted blue. But later models of this motor, the stator band is kind of a polished striped stator band. So that's what I'm going to fabricate. So what I've got here is just a piece of uh, flat steel. I think it's 24 gauge. And I'm tracing out the stator band and then we're going to cut it on the band the metal cutting band saw now I normally make this out of aluminum but this time around I wanted to see how the steel would do it's the first one I've made out of steel so I usually just use aluminum that's roughly the same thickness but I think the steel is going to hold up a little better. And as long as it polishes nicely, then we're good to hook. So everywhere that we cut with the bandsaw, we needed to sand because it leaves a real jagged edge. And then this is a board, uh, just a piece of MDF that I use to do this with. So I'm just going to screw the MDF down to my bench. And when we made the uh, cutout, for the stator band it really only needed to be about 22 inches long but that piece that I used is about 24 inches long so I've got some leeway there and I'm just going to drill holes in the end of each one of those 
uh, legs that are on it and then we can screw that down to the MDF so that it will not move around. And then we're going to use the oscillating sander and we're going to sand this with 320. And then I've got these rubber sanding pads that I use for my hand drill. And I basically cut some sandpaper in a four inch by four inch square and I'm going to use electrical tape to just hold it in place because I don't have sanding discs for the wet sand. And so we're going to start with 320 and we're going to work our way up to 2000 grit. And we're just wetting the sandpaper and then sanding the center section. You don't really don't have to worry about those legs that come off of it. And then we're going to rinse it between each sand as we work our way through the grit. So this is the 2000 here. So like I said, we'll do 320, 400, 600, 1000, 1500, and then 2000 grit. And that brings it to a decent shine, but it's not the, the polished shine that we want. So after we rinse it and dry it off, we're going to apply the Mother's Mag and Aluminum polish to it. And then we'll use a buffing pad and we're just going to buff it. So I have two of these buffing pads, so I'll use one to do like an initial buff. And then this one is the final buff. And you can see how shiny and chrome like that that metal will get and the aluminum shines up even better so you know this is really good for steel now i have a vinyl cutter and i basically just cut out a bunch of 1 8 inch pieces of vinyl that are spaced 1 8 of an inch apart and we're just going to apply those directly over the stator band and let them adhere to it. Next I use a just a piece of scotch bright and I'm just going to buff the exposed metal with the scotch bright which will dull it. It'll scratch it up and give it a dull finish. And then we remove the vinyl from the headband. So all the vinyl did was mask off the area that we wanted to retain the shiny appearance. And you can see the effect you get. And that's basically what the head or the stator bands look like on the later models of this motor. So next we're going to be fabricating the terminal bar. If you recall, the terminal bar just fell apart as we were trying to remove wiring from it when we had disassembled the motor. So this black material here is a material called Garolite. It's a flame retardant uh, sheet that is 3 seconds of an inch thick and you can get it from McMaster Car. And basically, we have made a uh, cardboard cutout of what we need. And we are going to just transfer that uh, cutout onto the Garolite and then cut the Garolite out with the bandsaw. And after we've got it cut out, then we're going to mark it for where the screw holes need to be. And then we'll drill those out. And then we'll 
just screw them in to make sure everything fits. And this Gerolite is uh, non-conductive. They do make Gerolite that is conductive, though. So make sure you get non-conductive Gerolite so that it is an insulator. And then we had to drill the two additional holes for the wiring to bolt to it. And that was fabricating the uh, terminal bar. So now we're going to clean up these metal parts for the motor that are all to the left of the screen here. And we're just going to use the wire wheel on them. And you can see how shiny they are now. And then lastly, we're going to coat them with the super lube and then dry them off with the towel. And that's going to wrap up this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. And uh, part 12 will be coming soon where we will start to reassemble this thing. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.